Good day, everyone. Today we will be discussing further on the amino acid biosynthesis. The last lecture we discussed about how the amino acids are getting its nitrogen and how the atmospheric nitrogen is getting reduced into ammonium salts and how the ammonium uh, is getting assimilated in the amino acids through glutamate and glutamine. In this lecture, we will be focusing on how the carbon backbone of amino acids are being obtained from the various precursor molecules and how the pathways are being taken forward in the formation of amino acids. We will be focusing on the biosynthesis of non-essential amino acids. The basic carbon backbone of the amino acids are being obtained from the intermediary molecules which are produced through various metabolic cycles like the citric acid cycle, glycolysis and the pentose phosphate pathway. Ribose 5-phosphate which is a part of an intermediary product of the pentose phosphate pathway forms histidine and the intermediaries of the glycolysis pathway 3-phosphoglycerate, erythrose 4-phosphate form, uh, take part in the synthesis of tryptophan, phenylalanine and tyrosine, while uh, the same is being formed from phosphenol pyruvate as well. Pyruvate take part in the synthesis of alanine, valine, leucine and isoleucine. The intermediaries of the citric acid pathway, oxaloacetate and alpha-ketoglutarate also act as precursor molecule for the formation of the different amino acids. Aspartate is formed from oxaloacetate and aspartate in turn act as precursor molecule for the formation of uh, many different amino acids like asparagine, methionine, threonine and lysine. Glutamate, which is derived from alpha-ketoglutarate in turn act as precursor molecule in the synthesis of glutamine, proline, and arginine. So based on the precursor molecules from which the different amino acids are being synthesized, the amino acid biosynthetic pathways can be grouped into families. There are six major groups based on the uh, precursor molecules that go into the formation of the different amino acids. As you can see here in the chart, oxaloacetate produces aspartate and from aspartate different amino acids are being formed. Likewise, pyruvate, alpha-ketoglutarate, all these forms precursor molecules for the synthesis of different amino acids. 3-phosphoglycerate produces serine, serine in turn produces cysteine and glycine. And likewise, phosphenol pyruvate and erythrose phosphate can produce phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. Let's check out some of the non-essential amino acids and how they are being formed from all these different precursor molecules. All these uh, listed out here, alanine, arginine, asparagine, aspartate, cysteine, glutamate, glutamine, glycine, proline, serine, and tyrosine. These are the non-essential amino acids. And why they are non-essential is because the body can produce these amino acids on its own. And these are the amino acids which we need not include or supply through diet. Having said this, there are two non-essential amino acids which the body cannot produce on its own unless and until it has got two essential amino acids present in the body. These two amino, non-essential amino acids are cysteine and tyrosine. Cysteine and tyrosine for their biosynthesis they depend on the presence of two essential amino acids, phenylalanine and methionine. We will be discussing further into this. Let's first take a look at how alanine is being formed. Alanine has got its precursor molecule as pyruvate and from pyruvate, alanine is being formed by the addition of an amino group to the pyruvate, which converts alanine, sorry, pyruvate to alanine. 
Likewise, oxaloacetate forms a precursor molecule for the formation of aspartate. And when the amino group is added to the oxaloacetate, it gets converted to aspartate. And this reaction wherein alanine and aspartate as being formed from pyruvate and oxaloacetate is an interchangeable reaction. And the formation of alanine and aspartate depends on the demand of these amino acids for the various functions in the body. So glutamate is being formed from alpha ketoglutarate and in turn from glutamate, glutamine is being formed. And this reaction is known as transamination reaction and is mediated by the enzyme transaminase. So in here, that is alpha ketoglutarate, which is an alpha keto acid, transaminase enzyme helps in the transfer of an amino group to this alpha ketoglutarate, that is an alpha keto acid, which results in the formation of glutamate. And again, you can see here pyruvate, which is an alpha keto acid, upon addition of an amino group get converted to alanine. We already saw that. And glutamate in turn gets converted to glutamine. In presence of ATP, it forms an intermediary acyl phosphate. And after uh, the removal of phosphate group and addition of uh, uh, NH2 group, this acyl phosphate intermediate get converted to glutamine. And this is again a transamination reaction. And now glutamine can in turn produce two different amino acids known as arginine and proline. And these two amino acids are being synthesized through a longer pathway which comprises of many different steps and glutamate provides the carbon backbone to these uh, arginine and proline while uh, the NH2 group is also being added to this through a process known as amidation especially in the formation of arginine. Likewise aspartate is getting converted to asparagin. Again, in presence of asparagin synthetase and glutamine at the expense of ATP molecule, the process is amidation. Aspartate is converted to asparagin with the addition of an NH2 group to this. And this NH2 group is being uh, provided or supplied by glutamine. And the process is known as amidation which is mediated by asparagin synthetase enzyme. 3-phosphoglycerate forms the precursor molecule for the formation of serine. Here you can see 3-phosphoglycerate gets converted to an intermediary 3-phosphohydroxypyruvate, which in presence of glutamate and a transaminase uh, enzyme get converted to 3-phosphoserine and later to serine. And this serine in turn get converted to the simplest amino acid glycine with the help of an uh, with the help of an enzyme serine hydroxymethyltransferase in presence of the tetrahydrofluorate which we otherwise known as THF. So Serine is formed from 3-phosphoglycerate and from serine, glycine is being formed in presence of THF, that is tetrahydrofluorate. So here we see that almost all these non-essential amino acids are being formed from the various precursor molecules which are produced from the metabolic reactions like the glycolysis, pentose phosphate pathway, 
or even the citric acid cycle, except for two amino acids, cysteine and tyrosine. Cysteine and tyrosine requires the presence of two essential amino acids, phenylalanine and methionine for their synthesis. So even if they are considered as non-essential amino acids, the body can prepare or synthesize these two amino acids only if the essential amino acids, phenylalanine and methionine are present. We will discuss further into how cysteine and tyrosine are being formed when we discuss about the synthesis of essential amino acids. So in the next lecture, we will be focusing on the synthesis of essential amino acids. Thank you for listening.